Hi guys, welcome to this channel. Remember, it's Max from the Max Creation. In today's video, we are going to look at the requirements of being a security guard in Qatar. I think that was a question that coming from the comment section. And I want us to go through, I want us to share what are the requirements that you need to be a security or to work as a security guard. I know most of you, it must be your dream right now. It must be your dream in the future when you are planning to come to these Gulf countries because it's normally a hot cake. Uh, one of the uh, unskilled jobs that you can easily get in the Gulf. So we want to see what are the requirements that you need to be or you need to have to be a security guard in job or to get a security guard job in Qatar for those that wish to work in, as a security guard. One, you should have a passport. Remember, when you have the passport, the passport is the only way gateway that will enable you to get a visa for that for, 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 for that country or for that job that you're wishing to do in one or the other. And remember, before you even think of anything, before even you think of planning and having a mindset of traveling to out of your country of origin, then definitely you should or you should know that you should have what you call a passport because a passport is going to make you uh, move or it is one requirement that enables you to cross one border to another border so you should have a passport before even you plan plan having a passport then too you should have what you call a work visa a work visa normally it depends you may have be on a visa visa uh, but for sure i love to let you know the easiest way to come in Qatar here is working or having what you call a work visa and when you have what you call a sponsorship it's quite very easy for you when you have a sponsorship it will be very easy for you you get you get a job and everything will be on your table all you need to have only need your passport and everything will be done it's cost effective in one way or the other although sometimes some agents scrupulously get to charge a lot of money in one way or the other but when you work when you get someone to sponsor you with a work visa in Qatar here it's quite sad it's quite saving uh, time saving and also cost effective then still you should also be what you call medical fit number three should be made of caliphate to remember i keep on telling you before even you to your plan of traveling out of your country you should first take your medical test take the medical test that out of your body and 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 just find out how your body stands out of it because remember when you come to these countries you'll definitely take what you call another medical test or what you call the fitness test to see they definitely want to verify to see whether you are eligible to work in this country so you definitely know that even if at one moment of time you get to beat out with the results in your country you lie about your results in your country they will definitely have to prove them right here and if you are medically unfit or you are not unfit to do then they'll probably deport you back in your country so make sure as you are planning to come here you thoroughly check your body before you even think of traveling and the medical fitness is also very important then still you should also have a contract because a contract will enable you will understand the contract when you get this job the contract definitely is just going to give you the rules the guidelines of what you're supposed to follow and what are your what is the relationship between you and your employer or the person who has given you uh, the, the work or the person who has sponsored you most of the time as most people come to Qatar or come to these Gulf countries and they do not care so much about the contract because their companies are not either giving them the contracts or their companies are laying the contracts and even them themselves they do not even pendingly try to ask why they don't have the contracts and yet by law when you look at uh, according to the law that gazes they cut the labor law in Qatar here if each of the, the worker is supposed to have a contract that is approved by the government and is approved by the employer. That kind of relationship such that it definitely specify or it outlines the rules and regulations. Then also, right now you should have what you call uh, any relevant document, any relevant education document is also mandatory. You can have it for yourself. For full size, much as here in Qatar uh, right now, uh, there are not a lot so much and the and not so much strict security guards uh, requirements. But for your own safety, you should have with you what you call an education certificate aside. You never know, maybe tomorrow an opportunity may come in the company and you're the one to take up the company. That will be a very good opportunity for you to have it. Then also look at what you call another one is what you call certificate of good conduct, is also very important as a security guard you supposed to have a certificate of good contact this is what we call a police clearing certificate police clearing certificate is normally coming from your country of origin and it is going to specify uh, 
that you have no criminal record away from your country meaning that even your sponsor or the person that is employing you will be a hundred percent sure and uh, uh, very safe if he's working with someone he knows of a criminal record then also uh, another point is that we look at the age concept to work as a security guard. Uh, it should be between 18 years to 40 years. Uh, you are between that age, you definitely know you are eligible and you can do the security job because some of most of the time the security guard will also security job will also require you to be a bit a little bit, a bit uh, physically fit for some situations. For example, we have a fire in the building and there's an evacuation, so you need also to have a particularly be fit that you can also perform a given task at a grant in case of this evacuation anyway that's why the age consent is between 18 years to 40 years then when we look at another point is what you call the height requirements you know when we talk about high requirements it's also another mandatory or something that we should also talk about is that what are the the height what is the height requirement of a male and what is the height requirement of a female when you look at the height requirement of a male it should be five five feet to six inches or five feet seven inches that is what you call a male security or a male security guard you should be that tall five inch six inch uh, five feet six inches or five feet seven inches then if you are a female your height should be five feet uh, minimum should be five feet uh, two inches and the maximum are uh, uh, two five five feet two three inches those are kind of measurements height measurements uh, for 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 people willing to work in um, the gulf in um, a security guard and remember when we talked about the education 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 certificate why this one sometimes is very important it is because they want to find out whether you can read and write because for example you're working as a security guard and you need to make a report you need to know how to write uh, and you know how to read at least either you can communicate well in Arabic or you can communicate English uh, such that you can give utmost of that kind of, uh, of service to your clients to, to the clients then we look at the weight also the weight the minimum weight or the minimum weight at least should be around 60 years 60 kgs that is what the minimum weight for for for, for working as a security because we're looking at this weight as you are able person and you physically fit uh, to withstand or to stand for long hours or even do a little bit of manual work that may be given in one way with to some companies or to some uh, to some companies they may require you of one or two, two years of experience and uh, that experience of security may either be coming from your country or not even your country or may be coming from the Gulf uh, Gulf countries or even in your country when you go to avoid those interviews they will definitely have to ask you a little bit of some of uh, security techniques and what do you need to do is to make sure you pass some of those kind of simple questions that will be asked uh, remember I talked about the security interview questions where I was giving you a tip of where to do some how to definitely go about with those questions that you can enable you secure a position for yourself so that experience to some companies they may hire you or some sponsor may be looking for people who have that kind of little bit of experience in one or the other which is one to two years then also we have a last one is what we call the good communication communication skills and those communication skills we are looking at since most of these Arab countries we expect Arabic to be spoken as the language so you can either have the skill or you can have those skills of speaking Arabic or you can also have what you call the English speaking either of the two languages will definitely work for you because there will be English is an international language and Arabic is also an international language and also it is a native language so definitely it will enable you to communicate well in one or the other hope I've tried to share up something and I always share up with you remember it's made from a common expression by the way don't forget to put a comment in the comment section I'll always be more than happy to get back to you and I'll always reply to you as soon as possible thank you so much see you again in the next video it's makes from the next creation TV thanks for watching